What actually is a blockchain? How does one function in practice? In this video we'll find out. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English but, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Consider when we make a bank transfer to a person. A bank in the middle acts as an intermediary, certifying the transfer of money and acting as a guarantor. Another example, when we buy a house between us and the seller, there is a lawyer who is the intermediary guarantor that officially certifies that the house has become ours. If we consider it for a moment, for the majority of all kinds of transactions, there is always an intermediary who serves as a guarantor, that is, who officially certifies this transaction. Now, paradoxically, if these intermediaries were not involved, there would probably be total chaos. Why? Because we would no longer know with certainty who owns a house, for example. Money transactions would be filled with fraud and deceit. Now, the question we ask ourselves at this point is, is there a way to make a transaction, perhaps transfer money from me to you, without a single intermediary guarantor being involved in the process? Yes, there is. Driven by the 2008 economic crisis and by the loss of confidence in banks, it was in the same year that a technical solution was introduced which enables the elimination of an intermediary guarantor and this solution is known as blockchain technology. This blessed blockchain is a shared digital ledger, just like a normal ledger, in that it contains a series of information which might be things like money transfers, changes in ownership of a house, a car or a motorcycle. The difference between it and a normal ledger is that the information is not in the hands of a singly guarantor entity like a bank or a lawyer, for example, but is accessible to all users in a reliable, fast, secure and trustworthy manner. A fundamental aspect to understand about a blockchain is that the information written in this ledger and therefore in the blockchain cannot be eliminated. I will explain why it cannot be eliminated shortly. Now that we have a clear understanding of the basic concept, let's explore what a blockchain actually is and how it works. Before we start, I just need to say that we had to simplify the concepts a bit in order to get to the heart of the matter. Anyway, if or when you go to explore the matter further, you will realize that everything is a bit more complex. How does it work? For example, let's imagine being in a city of 1 million people where blockchain is used. The blockchain, we said that we can imagine it as a shared ledger, a sort of document which all citizens have access to in the sense that they have a copy of it, a copy of the blockchain downloaded on their computers. As we were saying, all kinds of transactions are recorded in this ledger and no one can falsify or delete anything. Why? Because there are a million copies of the ledger. We said that everyone has a copy of the ledger. All right, so in the event that I choose to modify a record, let's say Pepe's one, I may falsify his one, but I don't falsify the other 999,999,000 blah blah blah, right? I mean, to falsify something in blockchain in this case, I would need to falsify the million existing copies of the blockchain. And this is the great thing about blockchain. Now let's see a practical example of how it works. I reiterate, this is a simplified version of the process. Today I'm selling my motorbike to Gabriele, okay? In this ledger, the information about the change of ownership will appear. This information will be present in the ledger, not only in mine and Gabriele's ones, but also in those of all citizens, okay? Is that clear? Of all the million people living in this city, the information is therefore decentralized. That is, it is not held by a single individual, okay? So it is the system that is the guarantor. Now why is it called blockchain, a chain of blocks? Why? Let's look at another example of the concept to understand it. I'm selling my used motorcycle to Gabriele, who, as a result, will be its third owner. So, if you think about it, there are three ownership steps. The dealer sells the motorcycle to the first owner, the first owner sells the motorcycle to me, and then I sell the motorcycle to Gabriele. It is a sequence of transactions, let's say, linked together in a chain. These steps are all recorded by the blockchain, which is actually a block ledger, where each block, and here's the thing, has an identity card composed of three identity elements. The data, an identifying code, similar to a person's tax file number, and the identifying code of the previous block. This identifying code is actually called a hash. 
Let's have a quick look at them one by one. The data, what do we mean by that? It's the content of the information. In our case, the motorcycle example, the transfer of ownership of the motorcycle from me to Gabriele. In reality, however, each block contains lots of transactions. We're trying to simplify things to make them easier to understand. Then there's the hash. It's practically, as I was saying before, a kind of individual code that identifies the block. So an alphanumeric code that makes the block unique and irreplaceable, a kind of digital fingerprint. Now here's a question. How do I know which block my block is connected to? That is, how do I know what the previous block is? I can identify it thanks to the preceding block's hash. My block also contains the identifying code of the preceding block. So by virtue of this, I am aware of which block precedes it and thus the chain is established. Now, why is it that when we talk about blockchain, Bitcoin is invariably mentioned? Because they were born together. In order for Bitcoin to be what it was intended to be, namely a digital currency, which could be exchanged without intermediary guarantors, a technology was needed that did not yet exist in 2008. And so the inventor of Bitcoin also invented blockchain. It is said that it was a certain Satoshi Nakamoto, but all of you who are familiar with blockchain and Bitcoin would already know this story. Nakamoto's true identity actually remains unknown to this day. Let's say that in order to exist, Bitcoin needed a system which could validate transactions regarding something digital. Someone might say, well, if I can send a photo to a friend, I could also just send them a Bitcoin. But no, if we think about it, there is a significant difference. The photograph that we send is a copy, but the Bitcoin cannot be a copy. It must actually be that Bitcoin to guarantee its unicity. Otherwise, it would be as if I took a 10 euro note and magically made a copy of the 10 euros and gave it to you. It would no longer have any value because that bank note with that code would no longer be unique. So a digital system is needed to validate this unicity. The blockchain enables you to do this. It enables you to validate unicity. This validation, if you think about it, is something that we already do. It's nothing new. It occurs in our banks, the ones where we currently have our savings. When we perform a bank transfer, everything takes place digitally. The money that passes from one account to another is not duplicated. So the question is, who validates the transaction? Who validates the unicity? The bank itself, but with its own internal system. That information is documented and stored in a ledger maintained and owned by the bank, not one that is decentralized and shared like in the case of blockchain technology. In any case, Bitcoin is only one of the very numerous cryptocurrencies that are currently out there. Thank you very much for watching until the end. See you in the next video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science. Ciao!